Hello, welcome to my channel, my name is Mark, and today I've dug out the old Sega planetariums that I reviewed last year, and we're going to put them up against the National Geographic planetarium that I've recently reviewed. I want to know which you think looks best. Previously, I've put the original Sega planetarium up against the newer Flux, and in the comments it's been very mixed. Some people really like how bright the Flux is, and that's, that's generally my favourite. A lot of people, though, prefer the original. So we're now throwing in a third one into the mix, and I want to hear from you. Let's keep this discussion going. Which of the three looks best? If you enjoy this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel where I do lots of product reviews and comparisons like this one. Let's take a look at the three contenders. First up, we've got the National Geographic Astro Planetarium. This is the lowest cost of them all. It's quite plasticky, you can pop some batteries in the bottom. It can be powered via DC, but that doesn't come with it. It's also got a radio built in and you can plug your phone in and it can play music and the radio out of these little speakers on either side. Next up, we've got the Sega Toys Original Homestar. This is the original version. It's got quite a glossy finish, very similar controls as the Astro. And again, it's a DC power, but this time you do get the plug and this can't be powered via battery. It's got its own stand pre-built in and a focusing ring on the top. Our final contender is the Homestar Flux. This is the newest and most expensive of the three. Again, very similar control layout. This also comes with a power cable that plugs in the side, but this one is USB powered, so you can either plug it into a wall or into a power bank, so it has some portability. All three share very similar design features. I personally like the finish of the Flux. I think it looks slightly better. And they all have a very similar control layout. You can rotate your discs clockwise, counterclockwise, and they all feature the shooting star effect. And that just, every now and again, I think it's every 30 seconds or so, you'll see a shooting star. One of the big differences is the timer function. On the Flux and the original, you get 15, 30, or 60 minute shut off timers. With the National Geographic Astro, you only get a 30 or 60 minute shut off timer. Each of these comes with two discs and they are all tray loaded. The National Geographic though can only have two discs, there aren't any further discs available to purchase. The Flux and the original though do have extra discs you can buy and these discs will work in either projector. So now for the moment of truth, which do you think looks best? First up we have the National Geographic Astro Planetarium. This projects out a oval shape filled with lots of stars. I'm using these stars only. There is a constellation version of this and all the projectors come with stars only or constellation. You can see it's rotating round, they all can do that and in a moment you should spot a shooting star flying across which I think adds a nice little touch to these things. This is a fairly bright projector but I'm not a big fan of the oval shape. I much prefer it to be a lot more open and that's exactly what we get with the Sega Toys original planetarium that's on screen now. You can see this isn't quite as bright as the Astro, the National Geographic planetarium, but there's a less defined area. It is a lot more like you're looking up at the sky rather than looking out a little uh, window. There you can see the shooting star go across. I love those. I think it's a really cool little effect. And again, that'll go across every 30 seconds a minute or so. And uh, this is rotating again. Now this got improved, I think improved, with the flux by adding a lot more stars and it's a lot brighter so it becomes a lot more impressive. Now this seems to be the thing that people can't agree on. I personally prefer this. Again, there's the shooting star. We're seeing a lot more stars being projected. I prefer this look, but what do you think? Do you prefer this look or do you prefer the softer look of the original Flux? Or even do you prefer the National Geographic projection where it's a, a condensed oval shape of stars? So let's now check out the brightness. Let's do a full comparison. On the left, you've got the National Geographic Planetarium. In the middle, you've got the original Sega Planetarium. And on the far right, you've got the Flux. Side by side, which do you prefer? My preference is still the Flux, but people do seem to like the softer version that the original Planetarium gives. 
So that's all three. Which do you think looks best? Personally, I still think the Flux is better. If you know of you know, even better planetarium, let me know. I'm quite interested in this kind of stuff. There doesn't seem to be the one that everyone agrees is the best so far. So I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and I'll see you on the next video.